So on my way home on the train one evening, I thought, all right, I better get started on this, this um, persuasion presentation. And as you do, you Google it. And uh, apart from some very boring business books on the art of persuasion, you get hundreds of covers of persuasion. I've been a bit of a bookworm. I flicked through them for hours as opposed to starting on my presentation. But I thought, actually, it, they really do show you. This is what we sometimes think that persuasion is. Two people facing in opposite directions, and it's your job to sort of fight them into your corner or to win. And actually, I don't think that's true when we're going into clients. It's not a negative where you're trying to <coughs> persuade them of your way. They actually do want good ideas, because going back to Martin's point, they want to be promoted, they want to get their bonuses, they want to make their sales. So I think they're willing you to want to, to bring them a good idea. So I think take advantage of that. So the first thing is, I think remember that the client does want you to come in with something really good. So let's think of it not as a battle, but taking going on a journey together. But we're going to use loads of AMV sort of uh, cues tonight. Craig Morsley told me something really brilliant, which is always start every single presentation by telling the client how wonderful they are. So this is Esther being um, fated by all and sundry trying to sell to her. And he told me that in his pitch, his first few charts are, you are amazing. And so you tell the client, your brand is brilliant. Thank you so much for the brief. So I always thank clients for giving us the brief. And you know, thank us for giving it. It's a great problem. It's really kept our brains ticking over for weeks. So a bit of flattery up front. And actually, it's true. We are very lucky. And what we have to remember is that you know, the clients worked really hard to give you the brief. So I think responding to them first of all and saying, thank you, this has been brilliant, sets you in a really good position, I think. However, at the end of the day, they do also want to feel in charge. So once you've done the setting them up and telling them how fantastic you are, then it's over to you. So you then have to become Balthasar here. You've got to land a surprise. So my view is that you always have to land a surprise in the first 10 or 15 minutes of a meeting. It's your chance to add value. You now have to bring to the table something they didn't know. Genuine insight, genuine step forward that helps them crack the problem that they've been torturing themselves with for months or weeks or years, whatever. This is your insight moment. You know, why choosing a holiday is, is all about being a great parent. It's actually because it's you want to be the best mum in the whole world. That's what you're doing when you're sitting there at night looking at you know, how you can get a bargain, how you can get a deal, how you can get your kids away for the summer holidays. It's nothing to do with price or how many hours it is and all the things people feed you back sometimes in focus groups. It's, I want to be seen to be the best mum in the world. And that's what you have to lead your client into that world and take them on a journey that they couldn't get from any other team in their company. I always think that's where we add value. As a media person, I've spent years explaining why 13 million people want to watch a baking program. And again, a, a woman, actually, the, the X Factor before that, a woman in Watford, when I worked on National Lottery, said to me something really insightful, that the reason her family watched the X Factor, even though we sort of hate ourselves for it, that she felt like a good mum, because her teenagers, her sons, her daughters, her 11-year-old, were all in the same room on a Saturday night. She didn't care what she had to watch. But if your kids are on the same sofa as you, that makes you very happy. So we have to remember that sometimes there are deeply psychological things that pull people together. And that's what we can bring to our clients. So I think surprising your clients, you're 50% on the way to selling your idea in if you've landed that. And really, what it does is that's your touchstone, I think, for three months down the line when it starts to wobble. That insight is what you say to your client, remember, remember we're digging deep for those mums or we're digging deep for those families in Britain. If you can land that insight, if that's the value you brought to the table, it allows you to pull them back in when, the, when everybody wavers, when the CEO doesn't quite like it. The next most important thing I think about your big idea, and Martin said it a couple of times, is keep it simple. You know, it might be beautiful, might have some great complexity to it, but we all know what it is. It should look really simple. It shouldn't have a spaghetti junction chart in it. It shouldn't have language that they won't remember when they take it up to their boss and go, I can't quite remember what they meant by that acronym or that's some amazing media or ad speak. You know, ethnographics and things like that, great for us. But when you hand it over to the client, 
handed over in its most beautiful, simple form, whether that's a media plan or a vision for doing something really exciting or a creative idea. I think you land your insight, you land your idea, and you hand it to them in a beautiful, simple format because they have to sell it on, exactly as you said. You think, could they stand this? Could they stand in a room and sell this on in a month's time when they haven't seen the agency for ages? That's what we've got to give them. And this is something that I learned a long, long time ago. A client who I've become great friends with told me that most ideas fail if you pass on too much of a burden to them to get work done. So don't sell them something that means that somebody in their building has to build a website, somebody in their building has to do a new app, somebody in their building has to do, create a new chocolate line in terms of NPD. You have to do the work. You sell them the idea and you say, don't worry, we'll build the website. Or you say, you already turn up and go, there's the app. It's already done. Because you give them an idea that means that they have to get new resource. Most clients are under-resourced, they're under-budgeted. Don't give them loads of work to do. So have a look at your idea and think, is this causing us work? It's fine, we get paid for it. If it's causing the client work, it will flounder and die as soon as you walk away out of the building. I genuinely believe that the more work you give the client team to do, the more likelihood there is of your work failing. There's a 100 reasons not to do everything and you have to make sure that you don't give the client any reasons not to. So at the end of the day, as Martin said, I had to raid it from VCCP. Keep it as simple as you can. Remember five or six things. Clients want good ideas. Go into the room smiling and positive. They want you to succeed. Your body language will share that with them. It is a shared journey that you want to take them on, but there's only one boss, and that's them. So you make them feel and believe it is their idea. They're taking it forward on the journey. You have to add value. You have to give them an insight that solves the problem. And that's our job, is to give them the solution, open the door. But that becomes the touchstone that you keep going back to. The best strategies have a beautiful simplicity in the language we provide our clients, a really simple story that they can tell anybody and the actions we're asking them to do. The client is the boss. You do the work. Always remember that when you're putting the idea forward. And I think the one last thing that I always teach people when we're training people is that tenacity, I think, is 50% of our job. So when you sell it in and you walk out of the room, the job's only begun. You need to call the client next day, ask them any, any issues, any hurdles they can see. If it's floundering, you go back in and see where the problem was. You support your team when it's floundering. I always think that's where our real job is. Tenacity is what we're really good at. And that's it for me.